Hey guys, I have been studying something out that I wanted to share with you. So I really love to study nature and science and compare that with scripture and, and apply it to myself as a Christian. And I have been studying the life of a wasp. So I have had dreams the past couple of years about wasp and stinging. And I knew that there was something spiritually that could be applied there. And I just could not quite get it in my mind what that was and until a couple weeks ago whenever I heard a fact about a wasp that when it is born it is pretty much fully adult when it's born and it doesn't grow very much at all after it is born and it finally clicked with me that I could compare that to many Christians so we're going to go over some facts about wasp and look at scriptures and kind of compare that and just look at it in a practical standpoint as of being a Christian. So some interesting things about a wasp. When it is born, it emerges fully adult. There is a very small window that it will grow at all. So three to four days, if it's going to grow, it will grow a little bit. But really, the process that it mainly undergoes during those three to four days is called hardening. So when a wasp is born, it's very soft. It can't fly and it can't sting because its wings and body and stinger are all too soft. But after that hardening process, then it can fly and it can sting. So just looking at that, those facts and comparing it to Christians, you know, it's really interesting because when you think about a wasp and their body is being soft, you know, I can think about a newborn Christian who is just newly born again, has received salvation and they're a babe in Christ, and they're soft, you know, their heart is not hardened, they're not cynical, and, you know, they haven't really undergone any big battle spiritually. Everything's bright and sunny and wonderful, and, um, you know, they, they haven't really been in battles yet spiritually, so they're soft and a babe in Christ, but, you know, as all Christians know, life is not perfect, and we will go through trials and tribulations there's many scriptures in the bible that confirm that you know we have not made it to heaven yet our life is not perfect and the bible confirms over and over again that we will go through trials and hardships as soldiers in christ you know as we live out our christian life so you know we think about that newly born again christian and that first trial that first test those first few battles spiritually will determine you know, a lot of times how a Christian will be, you know, with the Lord. So there's a few things that can happen. So, you know, that first battle comes along, those first few trials. Many Christians will flee from God. They didn't understand that, you know, they would still have to go through hard things as a Christian. And they feel like maybe it's too hard to, you know, fight these spiritual battles. So they run from God, you know, maybe that's not how they're, processing that information in their mind but that's what happens a lot of times you know they fall quickly because of the battles that they face as a Christian okay so uh, you know other Christians will use that trial as a way to you know make them better soldiers in Christ you know there are scriptures that say that there's joy in tribulation because the more that you go through the more that you will find God, that you will get closer to the Lord because you can see time and time again that he's brought you through battle after battle. He's been with you through every trial and tribulation. You know, as you mature and grow in Christ, the stuff that used to bother you as a newborn babe in Christ probably doesn't bother you that much anymore, you know. And until we make it to heaven, we're always going to have to face things in our life that are, you know, they're hard. They're hard. So a lot of Christians will find joy in tribulation, knowing that it's going to make them a better soldier for God. And then there is this other scenario I was thinking about where the trial comes and the Christian doesn't really flee from God exactly, but they go through that hardening process, just like that wasp. Their heart is hardened. Maybe a root of bitterness has grown in or, you know, they become cynical and they're very on guard. They're very... Uh, territorial and they like to use that stinger that the wasp has and we, I, you know we see that a lot but because of the hardening process there's not a lot of growth so I'm sure that we can all think of Christians who maybe they've been saved for a year 10 years 20 years but you you know 
you look at their life and they're very tough, they're very hardened. They maybe say stinging words, have stinging actions, and they haven't really grown or matured as a Christian. You know, there should never be a standstill with our walk with the Lord. We should always be continually praying more, learning more, studying more, getting closer to the Lord. And whenever we find that we are in a standstill, that there's no growth at all, we need to examine ourselves and ask the Lord, what's going on here? What is keeping me from growing closer to you? What is keeping me kind of encased in this hardened um, state, you know? So we think about these wasps and we're really going to take a look at the kind of scenario where the people are just stuck, not maturing, and they're just very have the wasp-like characteristics. So, um, wasps are generally social creatures, and they're very territorial. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure anybody that has been outside, you know, in areas where there are wasps, you get around their nest, and, I mean, they come at you. They are ready to attack. And, you know, a lot of times that you hear, well, you know, if you don't bother it, it won't bother you. Just keep away, you know. Um, and that's kind of like how a lot of Christians might be in that state. Um, as long as you don't invade their territory or do anything that conflicts with like their state of mind and where they want to be with the Lord, you know, that they won't attack you. They want to be left alone. They want to be left alone. And wasps really love sugary sweet things. They're pollinators. And that just makes me think of Christians who only want to hear sugar-coated candy messages. And they don't want any kind of doctrine that will, you know, push them to do more. Or to make them recognize their sin or that they need to grow. And if it's biblical doctrine and it is something that is in the Bible... And you find yourself maybe not wanting to hear it, you know, that's like a wasp like characteristic, I would think, because, you know, just very territorial, the wasp like sugary things, and doesn't want to be bothered. So you can think of those Christians that they don't want anything pushing the boundaries, they don't want to grow in the Lord, they're okay, they have that hardened heart have that tough exterior. They will sting if you get too close. And another thing about a wasp is that they will call for backup if they feel threatened. So, you know, if you mess with a nest of wasps, you're going to have to mess with a lot of, a uh, lot of bad things there. So, um, let's look at that scripturally though. So there are a couple of people that come to mind in the Bible that maybe had dealt with a hardened heart or bitterness and the first one I think about is Saul. He was the first king of Israel. He, you know, he he started out so humble. He even hid from his calling. The Lord used him to prophesy. And you quickly see that he disobeys God. And he then later becomes jealous of David. And there's a whole story there. We could go on forever about that. But read about Saul and David. Um, Saul becomes bitter and he, he becomes really jealous of David's anointing. And he is the king. So he calls on his armies. And his armies go after David and try to kill him. You know, he's very territorial. He doesn't want David around. He knows that um, David is blessed and anointed. But Saul is so bitter and so jealous that he just, he, he has stopped growing in the Lord. He lost his anointing from his own disobedience. David did not take anything from him. But Saul stopped growing in the Lord, stopped maturing in the Lord, continued in his disobedience, and allowed jealousy and hatred and bitterness to just really take a hold of him. And his heart was hardened to the things of the Lord. And such a sad story, Saul and David. Uh, Saul could have been great. First king of Israel, first anointed king of Israel. And the Lord could have moved him to do so many wonderful, mighty things. But he allowed bitterness and jealousy and the trials to, you know, just stunt his growth. And 
um, he used his power and he abused his power. And um, another person that I think of when we talk about like a stunted growth or a bitterness is Jonah the prophet. And Jonah, the book of Jonah is only four chapters. It's such an interesting story though because we think about Jonah and the whale and or the big fish, whatever you want to say. But, you know, that's the main point of the story that always sticks out. He was running from God and, you know, ended up being thrown overboard in the ocean and the well. We always remember the well. He was in the belly of the well for three days. But Jonah was a prophet and probably had been used mightily and could be continued to be used mightily. But, man, he had some bitterness in his heart. He needed to go to Nineveh to warn the people to repent or God was going to destroy them. He did not want to see those people saved. He knew that if he went and preached that message that those people would be saved and he did not want that. And if you really read that story with that kind of perspective, how he goes and he preaches that message and then he he's so angry that God saved those people and he was more concerned about the gourd, you know, the plant over him that had withered away and he didn't have any more shade. He was more concerned with that than the people of Nineveh, that their souls would be in hell if he did not preach that message of repentance. And, you know, I don't ever read in the Bible where Jonah's heart changed. He went away bitter and angry. And, I mean, the Lord could have used him so much more mightily, which, you know, he did use him in that instance. But, um, you know, we don't really hear anything else about Jonah. Did he go on and did he grow further in the Lord? He kind of walked away bitter in that, you know. And you see that again and again in the Bible where people's hearts are hardened. You know, Pharaoh in the book of Exodus, you know, he, he kept hardening his heart so much. Um, you know, eventually God hardened his heart because Pharaoh just, you know, he just kept hardening his heart toward the words of the Lord. And you just see that again and again where a trial comes, you know. You can think about people that you know in your Christian life. Um, Christians, you know, that have, they've just, their growth is stunted, but it's kind of of their own doing. They've allowed themselves to become hardened. Um, they want to be like really territorial, like don't, don't infringe on this, uh, on my Christian walk. Like I want to hear these sugar coated messages. Um, you know, they might not be saying that exactly in their minds, but their actions are showing that, you know, and they love to sting. They love to sting. So, Ezekiel 2 and 6, this is something I, that immediately made me think of the stinging. God is talking to the prophet Ezekiel, and he says, And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So he's saying, Ezekiel, you're going to go speak my word, but they're, who you're talking to are you know, rebellious people, and don't be afraid of their words. You're going to be among scorpions. You're going to be among stinging. You know, the people that you try to help the most, sometimes they have the worst stinging comebacks ever, you know, and it is so hard to speak the word of the Lord whenever you're among scorpions or among wasps, and, you know, I'm, I was thinking, like, how, how do we as Christians battle that you know, because we want, you know, when you have love for your fellow Christian and your fellow mankind, you love them and you want to see them further their walk with the Lord and you want to see them live a life to give God glory. And it's really hard with those um, people who are just really hardened um, and they're very, just really hard to deal with. And that, you know, that's who we need to show love to the most, of course. So I was just thinking, like, how can we, you know, apply this personally? And as I was studying this out, I came across this video that was showing how an army of ants had built a bridge to invade a wasp nest. And you should look that up. It's amazing. Like, the ants were the bridge. Like, it was made out of ants. They were just crawling over each other. And the the rope-like bridge that they made was several feet long that went from one place to a huge wasp nest. So, you know, we don't, as Christians, we don't want to invade people and attack those who need God's love the most. Um, 
we don't want to invade in that way. But if we can remember what Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we need to remember that Proverbs 6 and 6 says that we should consider how hard the ant works. So, you know, we talked about the wasp being a social creature and they can call on backup with, when they feel threatened. And that's how the ant is too. The ant continually works. The ant continually works because they know that there has to be work, you know, there is work to be done. So we, whenever you think about that spiritually, you don't want to invade or attack a wasp. You want to keep on doing the work of the Lord that he has called you to do. You know, being around people who are hard and bitter and have stinging words should not slow down your own progress. And it shouldn't slow down your own work that the Lord has called you to do. Be like that aunt who continually works, who continually works. And, you know, show the love of God as much as you can to those Christians that, you know, if they are stunted in their growth, in their aggressive and territorial and things like that you know they really need the lord to they need to examine their salvation they need to feel the love of god again and get back to the basics and get back to the solid foundation that is jesus christ and the lord can renew someone's heart and you know make a stony heart into flesh and make that soft heart pliable again to be able to really mold god can mold them into what they need to be and um Basically, we just need to show them the love of Christ and continue on about our work. You know, we can't be slowed down by these little stinging um, Christians, I guess, stinging Christians or hardened Christians, stinging words, the ones that want to attack and are just very territorial. And that shouldn't slow us down at all. And you know what's interesting in the book of Exodus, God is telling the Israelites that he will send hornets to drive out, you know, their enemies. So, he says he'll do it little by little. Now, if we turn that and, you know, go with the idea of the wasp, like we've been talking about, you know, a group of wasp will drive people away from the nest little by little. So if we think about that spiritually, that's kind of like the wolves that come in and try to steal the sheep and steal the flock out of the church. You know, little by little, little by little, these things creep in the church. Um, but we need to remember that we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. You know, we can call for backup as well. We could call on the Lord to help us and to uh, put a stop to these kind of things that go on inside the church house that might be causing division and hurt and all things like that. But we need to do it with love and we need to do it with the Lord on our side. And, you know, we need to remember that we're not fighting against that person who is like that. We're fighting against, um, you know spiritual things we're fighting against demonic presence that is trying to cause divisions and things like that you always show love to those christians always show love to those christians okay so what can you do if you are examining yourself and you think i might be a wasp or my spiritual walk with the lord is pretty stunted i have not seen any growth in quite some time you need to Further your walk with God, you need to pray and ask God to reveal to you the things that you need to lay aside, the things that he needs to deal with you on. Ask the Lord to soften your heart and to not behave in such a way that will stunt your growth spiritually. You know, there's a process that's called sanctification where the Lord has to remove things from your life, but he never removes anything that, you know, you need to hang on to anyway. And he will give you so much when you give your whole heart to him and ask him to mold you like the potter with that lump of clay. Ask God to mold you into who he wants you to be and to soften your heart towards everything, everybody, and to just really make you into the Christian that he wants you to be. Because the goal, God wants us to be conformed into the image of Christ were to reflect Jesus Christ and who he is. And if you find yourself thinking, you know, I am I feel that root of bitterness in me. I didn't even realize it was there maybe, or I didn't even know how to 
deal with that. And now I've become so hardened and so angry and I just sting people with the words that I say and the actions that I do. Go to God right now and ask him to remove that root of bitterness out of you. To dig that up. Cut away any dead thing in your heart that no longer serves you in your walk as a Christian. And if you have Christians in your life like that and you want to know how to deal with those types of people, just love them. Ask God to help you deal with that. And I have learned personally that when you are a Christian, you are going to have to learn how to have thick skin, but a soft heart. You're going to have to be able to have a soft heart enough to remember that you're fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You're going to have to have a soft heart enough to be able to have love and compassion for everyone. But you're going to have to have thick skin like God told Ezekiel. He says, don't be afraid at their stinging words. Don't be dismayed at their looks. You're going to have to toughen up and set your face like a flint and let these troubles roll off of you. Pray for those people who curse you and despitefully use you. Pray for them to have a softened heart. You know, show an extreme level of godly love to them. And, you know, call upon some prayer warriors. And, you know, just ask the Lord to really make a difference in that situation. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. And I really found it very interesting about the wasp and the ant.